Hi, this is Topology Review Part C, Computing Simplicial Homology. So simplicial homology are vector spaces or groups, the quotients zi mod bi, so we'd say cycles mod boundaries. To calculate homology, so zi mod bi, we have to do three things. First, we have to calculate the kernel of boundary i, so this means find a basis for it. For it. Second, we have to calculate the bi equals image of boundary i plus 1, and again, this means find a basis for bi. Third, we have to determine equivalence classes of cycles that form a basis for these. So that's what we'll do here, and we'll work through an example. Okay. So here you see the example on the left. It's a not very uh, complicated simplicial complex. It has seven vertices, a number of edges, and two faces. What we need in order to compute the boundary maps is a basis for each of the chain groups, so of C0 and C1. It'll be important uh, the order we choose for the basis vectors, as you'll see. So let's start. For C1, it's not C0, sorry, vertices. It's natural just to order the vertices as we see them, X1 up to X7. For C1, we're doing something different. Notice the ordering we have E12, E34, E35, and so on. If we look at the pairs of indices, 1, 2, 3, 4, 3, 5, these form an increasing sequence of numbers. They happen to be two-digit numbers because we're looking at edges. Call that basis beta. Then for C2, we do the same thing. We have two faces, so it's relatively straightforward. One face, 3, 4, 7, 5, 6, 7. And again, notice those are increasing integers, 3, 4, 7, and 5, 6, 7. This gives us a basis gamma for the two chains. And below, we see the chain groups, C2, C1, C0, and the boundary maps, boundary 3, boundary 2, boundary 1, and boundary 0. Okay, so let's move on. Let's work with H2 first. H2 is the Z2 mod B2. Notice that B2 is the image of boundary 3. That was the 0 map we see down at the bottom on the left, so the image is 0. There's nothing to do with B2. That means H2 is just equal to Z2. Now all we have to do is find the, the kernel of boundary 2. So to do this, we have to write out a matrix for boundary 2. We'll do it with respect to the bases. So here it was gamma and beta on the left. Notice that gamma is the basis for the two chains. Beta is the basis for the one chains. If we look at our matrix, we see the columns are indice indexed by the faces. F3, 4, 7, 5, 6, 7, in the order we chose. The rows are indexed by the edges, again using the order we chose. Now for the entries, if we look at F3, 4, 7, we need to calculate the boundary of F3, 4, 7, but we know that equals E3, 4, E3, 7, and E4, 7. So we see three ones in the first column. All the other entries are zero. They're not written out. Similarly for F5, 6, 7, we see boundary entries E5, 6, E5, 7, and E6, 7. That's the boundary matrix. We want to row reduce it. If we do that, we'll see we only want, we only have two entries, a one <coughs> on the upper left and a one on the lower right. That means we have two basic variables and zero free variables. The dimension of the kernel is equal to the number of free variables. In this case, it's zero, so the kernel is zero. That means we conclude the H2 of X is just the zero group. There's not much going on here, all right? Well, let's move on to the next case. Here we're going to calculate H1, Z1 mod B1. From the previous page, we know B1, the boundary, is the span of uh, E34 plus E37 plus E47 and E5, 6, plus E5, 7, plus E6, 7. These are just the boundaries of the two simplices. And they're the col columns of the basic variables in the matrix for B for boundary 2. Okay. Now we want to create the matrix for boundary 1. We're going to use the basis alpha and beta we had before. Notice here, the edges index the columns, the vertices index the rows. So if we look at the entries, for example, if we look at E12 in the upper left-hand corner, its boundary is the pair of vertices X1, X2, and we see that two ones in the first column, zeros everywhere else, 
And similarly, if you look at the rest of the matrix, each column has two entries in it, endpoints in the vertex. The endpoints are vertices of the edge which indexes the column. Okay, notice we chose the ordering of the edges in such a way that the matrix has a nice form. It's basically a, has a zero in the lower left hand, zeros in the lower left hand corner, and zeros in the upper right hand corner. The other thing to notice when we do row operations, since addition is subtraction mod two, addition is the only algebraic operation we need when we compute the row echelon form. Okay, so let's write down the row echelon form. And we see it now, row echelon form, okay, after doing row operations. So you see that the first five variables, so the variables corresponding to the columns E1, 2 through E4, 6, those are basic variables. And we see that the remaining four columns correspond to free variables. So we know from linear algebra that in order to find a basis for the kernel, we have to alternately set the free variables equal to 1 and all the others equal to 0. So for example, if the coefficient of E67 equals 1, then we find a solution here, which is 1 times E34 plus 1 times E37 plus 1 times E46 plus 1 times E67. So we would say that E34 plus E37 plus E46 plus E67 is a basis vector for the kernel of boundary 1. And we can see this vector on the lower left, here we have the complex we started with, and we see that vector E34 and plus E37 plus E46 plus E67, and we see that it's a triangle. It happens to have four sides, not three sides. If we set the other free variables equal to one, we wind up with three other basis vectors. So the second one, we set E57 coefficient equal to one. We get this triangle on the left. We see that triangle captures the tunnel on the left, just as the first one captured the tunnel on the right. Now, if we set the other free variable, E5, 6, equal, coefficient equal to 1, we wind up with a square. That square captures both of the tunnels. Finally, if we set E4, 7, equal, coefficient equal to 1, we wind up with the triangle in green, and that's the boundary of the simplex, the two simplex we see on top. Okay, now we said we also had to think about relations and generators in homology, so let's move on. Okay, so first of all, notice that Z4 on the bottom right, that basis vector is the boundary of F347, as we said, so it's a boundary, it should be equivalent to zero. On the other hand, notice that if we take Z1 plus Z2 plus Z3, work that out, we'll see that it's equal to the boundary of the other two simplex, boundary of F567. All right. Now we also said that Z2, so Z2 is the one second from the left on the bottom, that captures the tunnel on the left, and Z1 plus Z4 captures the tunnel on the right. So the homology will be generated by 0, Z2, Z1 plus Z4, and Z1 plus Z2 plus Z4. If we look at that, you might say, where are the other generators we found for the kernel? Well, let's see. Z1, that's an element of Z1 plus Z4, the equivalence class. Why is that? If we take the difference, Z1 plus Z4 minus Z1, we get Z4, which is a boundary. So that says that Z1 and Z1 plus Z4 are equivalent monoboundary. Then if we look at Z4, that's in the equivalence class of zero, since Z4 is itself a boundary. So when we take the quotient, it goes to zero. And if we look at Z3, the third of the basis vectors for the kernel, we see that it's an element of Z1 plus Z2 plus Z4 equivalence class. Why is that? If we take the sum, Z1 plus Z2 plus Z3 plus Z4, so remember that plus Z3 is actually subtraction of Z3, that equals the boundary two of the two, two simplices. So this gives us a complete set of relations. We know where all the generators in the kernel are. And if we go on, what do we have? We have shown that h2 of x is 0. We've shown that h1 of x, which we just finished calculating, is z2 direct sum z2. What are the elements? 
the equivalence class of zero, Z2 of Z1 plus Z4, and Z1 plus Z2 plus Z4. Uh, we'll leave the rest, H0, to you. But if you were to do this calculation, you would also see that it's Z2 direct sum Z2. That's because we have two connected components. And the basis would be 0, X1, X3, X1 plus X3. And that finishes uh, this session. Thank you.